All right, welcome back to PacWest Bigfoot. This is David, and uh, before we get started with this week's Bigfoot or PacWest Bigfoot encounter story, just wanted to say thank you guys so very much for following along and all of that. As a matter of fact, in the next, uh, uh, this coming Monday, I'm going to uh, announce uh, this this month's winner of the uh, <clears throat> cards. Uh, these are actually uh, greeting cards. Uh, and they're blank inside, of course, but on the outside are gorgeous, gorgeous um, uh, Bigfoot artwork from Robin Hyatt over at Etsy. <clears throat> I'll also be sharing some uh, awesome uh, links and stuff to her uh, artwork. Also, I'll be giving away at the same time to the same winner an awesome uh, Southern California Sasquatch Organization member shirt. So you guys are going to get that as well. So there you have it. <clears throat> so with that, let's um, let's get a sip of water real quick. <clears throat> it's been a pretty hairy uh, a week here. Um, no pun in well, pun intended in the uh, beautiful Pacific Northwest. As a matter of fact, it's still kind of smoky in my house. About uh, 20, 25 miles away from me is a pretty big forest fire. So <clears throat> they're keeping an eye on it. Uh, and uh, God bless all those guys out there fighting that, all you ladies and, and gentlemen out there in the uh, Forest Service and the uh, firefighting crews. Thank you guys so very much. <clears throat> and if you run across that hairy thing, you let us know. Okay? All right. So <clears throat> clear the throat and let's get going. Boy tells parents about Bigfoot on their property near Yakult, Washington. I was seven years old when I had seen a Bigfoot on our property at night near Yakult, Washington, and on multiple nights. I told my parents about it, and at first they laughed it off. But soon enough, strange things started, ha started happening around the area, and they finally took me seriously. Twenty years later, and I am still awestruck at what I saw. So much, in fact, I move and moved and lived in the city now as an adult. Uh, when I say awestruck, I also mean fearful as well. Uh, what I saw was scary crazy, as they say today. And even though there was some awe to the feeling, mostly it was just fear. Here's what happened, Dave. Nightmare on Northeast Amboy Road. I was born in Yakult in the early 80s. I now live in Seattle and do not venture too far away from the city and into the woods of the Pacific Northwest, and for good reason. Some, well, a couple of my closest friends think I have been simply I had been simply having nightmares at the time, and that was and that was all, just nightmares. But I know what I saw on several occasions, and I know at least today my parents know the truth as well. They still live outside of Yakult. In the same old road? In the same old house? Well, it has been remodeled once or twice since the early 1980s. Even my old room is no longer my room. It is now a home office for my mom and dad who have been uh, work-at-home types their whole lives. Well, at least since the day I was born. But let me tell you what I saw and why I still, to this day, believe somewhat, uh, feel somewhat uncomfortable when visiting them during the holidays or when dropping off my son to visit for a week or two in the summer each year. The property is quite a ways out of the town of Yakult, but it's still considered Yakult as far as the mailing address is concerned. My parents <coughs> bought the property a few years uh, before I was born. When they hit it pretty big in a network marketing business, they joined. It was a supplement company, and eventually they would move to another, uh, move to another um, a company by the near uh, early 90s, and still grew a massive base of customers and members. But suffice it to say, once the first company took off, they wanted to get away from the city, and at the time they lived in Portland, Oregon. Knowing they were set with a great income, they wanted to live out in the country, so they decided to travel around the Pacific North Northwest looking for a place they liked. Yakult, Washington was the place eventually. They said that they found some other areas in Oregon and Washington, but this was a great place to live. They could get to a major metropolis in just a couple hours, and there were bustling little towns for growing their business in, in almost any direction. So after a few weeks of searching <clears throat> for a home, they found one way, uh, one way out Amboy Road. This would be the place a nightmare would in fact come to life for me, and my parents, well, they would at least come to accept a new reality. <clears throat> Mind you, 
My parents never moved, and even today they still hear odd things off in the distance, and so do the neighbors. But nobody has ever been harassed, so it is all ignored, or simply put, accepted. Personally, however, <clears throat> I, be I believe that will be a matter of time. Sooner or later, something is going to happen. I just feel it. But, on to my sighting and experience. Million Dollar Man versus Bigfoot. <clears throat> I love the Million Dollar Man episode with Bigfoot, and I still watch it today when I can't when I can find it. <clears throat> I also like other old Saturday morning shows that included Bigfoot, and yes, there were some. However, I thought it was fantasy, made up stuff. Uh, even as a seven year old in the late eighties at that point, I was an only child and uh, at least for another two years. And I wasn't know-it-all at that point, my mother said. She also said I was rather mature for my age back then, and so being afraid of the dark was something I could say at the time I was not, until something stepped out of it, at least, and into reality. I was seven. I had my own room on the second floor of our house. My parents had a master bedroom upstairs, too. It is a huge house, even before the addition and renovations. My bedroom overlooked the back 15 acres. After about 30 yards or so, was all forest. Out the front was the long dry driveway that led to the main road and past the old train track. It was almost fall when I first heard strange sounds coming off the hillside not far away, and eventually I heard it in my backyard. Before I'd seen anything, for weeks I would hear whooping noises, uh, what are called tree knocks, and of course, on a few occasions, I could, I could hear screaming and hollering in the distance, which freaked me out. The evenings were still warm outside, I remember, but that did not last long. However, for the time being, my mom left the window open a bit to keep it cool in the room. That was the beginning of what would be a couple months of on-and-off scary stuff for me and a few sightings, or Bigfoot as well. It was a weekend, I believe, when I <clears throat> heard the first vocalization of whoop, 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 whoop. The sound from out beyond the trees came. It kept repeating the series of three to four whoops every few minutes or so, and for the next couple hours it kept going. I do not think or recall it stopping till after midnight or so. I remember it being real creepy, and once I even got up at night and asked my mom to shut the window, but she insisted on it being open. After that, I covered my head with the blankets and fell asleep eventually. Shadows in the night. The whoop sounds continued here and there for another week or so until one night they seemed to come closer, <clears throat> and it turned into light chatter and whistles. Like I said, the property in the backyard was <clears throat> open grass until a fence stopped the encroachment of the forest itself. And if you were from Washington, well, you know the forest here. It's real thick. By the end of two to three weeks, just after school started, I noticed the whoops ceased almost completely. There were some here and there, but the whoops, for the most part, had become chatter, or talking, I guess you could call it. I thought it was talking at least. The night chatter started... I thought someone was in my backyard in the middle of the night at first. Maybe my mom and dad were up on the patio chatting the night away. They were like that sometimes. I walked over to the window and listened closely. Blah, 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 blah. I could not understand a word. They were either too far away or it was a different language. What I did realize, though, was the fact that the voices were more than just that. There were multiple voices coming from several directions just inside the forest line. The voices were also weird in a way that they had sounded. I wish I had a recording, and I bet you do too. But you know the Sierra sounds? It's pretty close. It's deeper and scarier, if you ask me. And I remember a lot of clicking sounds as they clicked, as they talked or chattered. I kept my window shut after that night, but I did get up once. Uh, my mom tucked me in to look and see what I could see. And boy, did I. Shadows. Tall dark and crazy fast shadows in the forest is what I saw at first. It was getting cooler at night by then, but the window was still open the night I heard whistles again and watched as shadows darted here and there in my backyard. 
They were not loud whistles. <clears throat> it was this. It was as if they were trying to keep it down, as to maybe not gain the attention of us in the house, if that makes any sense to you. They were also sharp whistles, and I mean, well, crisp and clear. <clears throat> I got out of bed, <clears throat> walked over to the window, crouched down, and stared out the window. It was a clear night that night, I remember, and I could see pretty well after a few seconds. It only took the few seconds before I noticed something dart from one side of the, the yard beyond the fence to the opposite side, and I also noticed something out of the corner of my eye to the west side of the house move in between the trees. The whistles came and went, and the tall, dark figure to the back of the property kept moving in and out of the trees. Later, as I got older, I judged that thing to be at least nine feet tall. I was getting real scared and ran down <clears throat> to tell my mom and dad what I was seeing. Of course, they heard nothing over the television, and after looking out my window and hearing nothing, they blamed it on a bird or other animal. I knew better, <clears throat> and I tried to explain, but that was their answer, and the final answer I could tell. My parents are great and loving folks, but at that point, they did not believe in Bigfoot. <clears throat> the thing at the window. Weeks later, and there it was, a tall, hairy, scary monster leaning in and looking through the kitchen window downstairs. This was right below my window, and I have to say, it would not take much for that thing to reach up and take hold of my window seal, it was so tall. It came from the side of the yard, almost out of nowhere. <clears throat> I was listening to the whistling and murmuring again. Then out of nowhere, this thing walked right up to the back side of the house, leaned down, peering through the kitchen window. <clears throat> like I said... It was tall, dark, covered in hair. I could not make out the exact color it was, uh, but it was dark. But I could tell that it was a darker shade, of course. Its hand was literally just feet away from my window when I peeked over the ledge of the window frame again. Its head was cone-shaped, I could tell, and looking back, it must have been at least eight plus, uh, plus feet tall for sure, and I'm being conservative here. I made no sudden movements at all, just kept peeking over the window ledge quietly as this thing moved its shoulders and head around, looking in at what I guessed was my parents in the living room. It kept <clears throat> repositioning itself, its head and shoulders here and there, but then it took a whiff of the air and looked up towards my window faster than I could duck my head. I freaked out. I did duck down, though, <clears throat> and heard its heavy footsteps moving off. Before I could even peek back over the window ledge again, it was gone. I ran downstairs yelling. My parents then took me serious, finally. My father decided to grab the handgun, <clears throat> loaded it, and left to take a look outside by the window. To my mother's surprise, he did not come back with a It's all clear, honey, report. He noticed impressions, large ones, that had a foot-like shape to them but he thought it could not be as they were far too large to be a human footprint. He started to allude to an animal of some kind or bear again, I remember, but that is when I stopped them and told them about the monster outside the window. This time, they listened intently. After that, I'd seen it, or one of them again as they strolled through the backyard from one side to the other. The size and shape was about the same, if I remember correctly, so I do believe it was the same one that was at the window a week earlier. After that, it was just shadows until even they faded away over time. Mom, Dad, and the Bigfoot My dad and Mom became aware that something was out there. Between the impressions the next morning that were clearly visible and the vocalizations that they started hearing as they decided to spend more time in the evening on the back deck, back deck after that, even through the winter months, we could hear these things mumbling off in the dark, and once we all heard a scream, and that put my mother on edge for months after that. Of course, nothing came of it. My dad simply dove into the information available at the time about these things, and even talked to a guy who was from around here, and had seen these things before. The vocalizations, however, stopped for a bit during the spring months, and even into a bit of summer. But as usual, by late July or mid-August, they were back, mumbling, shadows, whistling and all. It fascinated my parents, whereas I was rather distraught about the whole matter of these things being around in my yard. 
My mother did say that we should not be wandering too far out into the forest in the evenings, so evening walks together out on the trails became afternoon walks instead. There were some conversations with the neighbors, well, one neighbor that is. She was a horse trainer and knew these things had been in the area for years and years, even before she had moved here. She knew when they were around because I remember her saying that her horses would get nervous and huddle together when they were about on the property. They never ventured to hurt them, or her, her for that matter, so she never felt like doing anything about them. There was one other crazy incident, however, one that gave me more nightmares, and one that would last me to this day. I lived near the turnaround for the local public school bus. To get there, however, I had to walk the driveway, the long dirt driveway that was surrounded on both sides by forest. Yes, you got it right. One of them followed me or chased me or something. I was a bit older, about 13, when I was followed or shadowed, I guess you could say. I was late getting home from football practice, my first year playing. My ride home dropped me off at the top of the driveway. The sun was almost down, but it was not completely dark, just real late in the afternoon was all. It was not even 50 feet down the driveway when I felt as though I was being watched. You know that feeling. Then, a few more feet, and something was literally walking along with me, keeping pace, but just out of sight, in the woods, and I could hear it. I can't say what if, uh, you know, I can't say it was that Bigfoot I saw, or any of them, for that matter, but it was walking on two feet, and the heaviness could be heard as it walked along. I was really freaked out, and finally decided to run. <clears throat> that thing started running too, or just picked up its pace at least. This time, however, I just knew it was not being friendly, as it was, or sounded like it was not. Knocking down stuff as it ran, and as it, all of a sudden, it seemed like it was edging over towards me. I thought I was going to be cut off, but all of a sudden, it stopped. Was it mimicking me? Was it trying to cut me off? I don't know. What I do know is that I do not trust those things at all, and I can do without being around them. Personally, they give me a very bad feeling. Bright Lights, Big City It is not that I am so fearful that I will not visit home or take my own kid out to the grandparents and drop him off for a week in the summer, but I am adamant about what he does there and where he is allowed to venture without Grandma and Grandpa. They know this well. And I am just me, I guess, overprotective. Once you see these things, well, those of you who have, know that while they can be rather awe-inspiring, to a seven-year-old, they are simply a monster, and one that I will never soon pretend does not exist. I live in the big city today, and I prefer it to the country. You who think that mountain lions or bears are all you need to worry about out in the woods today, well, good luck with that. There's a lot more out there than just that, and I prefer to stay away from it myself. My parents say that they are not there or around as often today, but there was a few times over the last few years that my son said he had heard them in the middle of the night and had also seen shadows just beyond the tree line as well, just like I did when I was a kid. Thanks.